We have our guy. Adolf Eichmann. The architect of the final solution? After receiving a tip that Adolf Eichmann is hiding in Argentina, Israelis hatch a plan to abduct the architect of the final solution and bring him to justice. At the time, Argentina harbored a sizable number of runaway German Nazis, leaving Israel no hope that an extradition request would be honored. I would happily put a bullet in between his eyes, but that's not what we're doing here. This is strictly catch and extract. Eichmann will stand trial here in Israel. Led by Mossad operative Peter Malkin, an elite group abducts Eichmann and takes him to a safe house. There, Malkin tries to understand the man he saw as a monster. May I ask you something? I'm not in a position to refuse. Is it true you called the camps liquidation machines? Everyone used flippant terms for dirty work. Sir Ben Kingsley tells VOA that his depiction of a vulnerable and human Adolf Eichmann is a warning that the most heinous crimes in history are committed not by mythical monsters, but by everyday people. He relates a personal story that has haunted him over the years and informed his decision to take the role. I was outside an old synagogue with um, a Jewish journalist, a young woman, and a Hungarian approached us and asked us what we were doing. And we said, we're filming the life of Simon Wiesenthal, to which he replied, ah, you Jews. You should just keep quiet, because it never happened. And if you don't keep quiet, it'll happen again. Now work that one out. Work that one out. Absolutely shocking. Oscar Isaac plays Peter Malking, a man grieving the murder of his sister and her children by the Nazis, but who treats Eichmann kindly and convinces him to cooperate. It's almost like Malkin convinced Eichmann of his humanity. You know, the whole thing was about, you know, if, if we were like you, you'd be dead right now. As the son of Holocaust survivors, filmmaker Chris Weitz says the story is a personal one. Because uh, I was raised uh, by, as a child of somebody who had lost everything um, to this sort of spasm of national hatred. Uh, and so there was a notion that no matter how good things were, uh, th things could uh, go haywire uh, down the line. Um, and I think indeed a lot of people are waking up to the possibility that if it's not anti-Semitism, it could be anti-immigrant sentiment. Uh, or various other forms of racism that could totally disrupt uh, uh, society. At the film's premiere at the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., screenwriter and historian Matthew Horton said Eichmann's trial in Israel was a landmark moment for the Jewish people. The trial allowed them to grieve. It allowed them that moment of acknowledging what had happened to Israelis uh, and Jew Jewish people like, and, and move on from it and accepted it happened and moved on. And um, so even, even if there are still people, deluded people in the world who believe it's something that didn't happen, I mean, look, look at where we are. We're not, yeah, it's, it, it, it beggars belief. But that was one of the reasons why it was so pivotal, I think. It allowed, it allowed for national catharsis. Penelope Pulu, POA News, Washington.